Welcome back to Dan Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Express, released in the year 2008. The movie opens as players from Syracuse University and the University of Texas face off in a football tournament during a time of racial segregation in sports when black players were not awarded the same privileges as white ones. As the team prepares to play, Ernie Davis, a black player, is intimidated on the field by his Texan rivals. When the game starts, it soon becomes messy for Ernie. We then flash back to Uniontown, Pennsylvania in 1949, where a 10-year-old Ernie and his friend Will return home after a long day, but are bullied by a group of white boys. Will escapes and leaves Ernie behind, who is chased by the boys, but Ernie is too fast and they soon give up. Will is happy that Ernie escaped the bullies and the two return home. Ernie lives with his grandparents and his grandpa encourages him to read despite his stammer. Sometime later, Ernie is inspired to become a football player after watching Jackie Robinson, a black man, play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Then his mother Marie visits to tell him that she has remarried a lovely man and wants Ernie to move in with them. Ernie is not happy and is hesitant to go, but agrees and they leave the next day. Not long after he moves in with his mom, Ernie signs up at a junior football team tryout but is denied a jersey because he is black. Once the tryout begins, however, Ernie races past everyone and they are impressed with his moves. We then flash forward to the future where another black footballer, Jimmy Brown, is scrutinized by the media after he commented about winning big trophies. The press seems offended specifically because he's a black man. Jim's coach and the head coach of Syracuse University, Ben, asked Jim to help recruit Ernie before others scout him and recruit him into their teams. Ben and his coaching staff are impressed with Ernie's skills after watching a clip of one of his games. Jim, however, is hesitant to help Ben, who wouldn't want to approach Ernie on his own because Ernie is black, but Ben convinces him that he is helping another black man to get a chance, so Jim agrees. Jim is impressed after watching Ernie play and convinces him to join the Syracuse team, assuring him that Ben is a great coach. Several months later, Ernie joins Syracuse University's football team, and as training begins, Ernie becomes acquainted with his new teammates. Ernie soon becomes close with JB, another player, who tells him to listen to the coach's advice. Ernie is offered Jim's jersey, but he refuses telling Ben he is not as good as Jim. The coach, however, believes he can live up to Jim's abilities and insists that he keep the jersey. Over time, Ernie begins to outperform the best players on his squad, which stirs up jealousy among some of his teammates. During one of the training sessions, Ernie is tackled by one of his white teammates, Lundy, and Ben comments that Ernie will have to learn to shake it off as he will experience more harsh treatment because of his skin tone. Ernie and Lundy almost get into a fight but are separated by Ben and the rest of the team. Although Ben is very impressed with Ernie's performance and encourages him to do better, he does not scold Lundy for his racist behavior. At a party for Syracuse students, Ernie finds himself attracted to a girl named Sarah. He and JB double date with Sarah and her friend Gloria. Ernie and Sarah hit the dance floor together and have a great time. Ernie's fun was short-lived, however, and was soon back on the field where he continued to impress Ben and his coaching staff prompting Ben to register him with the varsity football team rather than the junior team. Many of Ben's coaching staff did not approve of this decision, but Ben was confident that Ernie would impress everyone. Ben continues to push his team hard to win the national championships, as Syracuse University has never won. On the day of the tournament, however, the Orange men struggle to make any headway. Ernie is frustrated because his rivals and team members pick on him on the field, However, the team does not lose faith and continues to try their best. Eventually, Ernie helps the team win the competition. Everyone praises Ernie, believing him to be the Orangemen's new MVP. That weekend, Ernie returns to his grandparents' house and they have a brief argument about his future. Ernie assures them that he has plans and then joins his old friend Will at a rally. There, Will asks Ernie to join the civil rights movement, but Ernie believes it would jeopardize his scholarship and future. 
Will, however, thinks Ernie has been brainwashed by Ben and tells him that all his other white folks will betray him someday. Ernie returns to Syracuse to continue training where Ben has developed a new tactic ahead of their next game. His tactic works and Ernie continues to lead his team to victory against other universities. Soon, every newspaper in the country is talking about Ernie, the fast-rising varsity football player. However, amidst the celebration, tragedy strikes as Ernie receives word that his grandfather has passed away. While attending his grandfather's funeral, Will continues to try to talk Ernie into joining the civil rights movement, but Ernie is still reluctant. Before their next match, Ernie has a breakdown and gets into a fight with Lundy in the locker room after stopping him from bullying another student. But the pair are separated and gear up for the game. Ben warns them that their rivals are unruly and their fans are equally savage and advises them to keep their helmets on at all times. As the team step out onto the field, the undefeated Orangemen are booed by their rivals. The match begins and the Orangemen struggle to find their feet. Ernie is ambushed and brutalized by the rival team before he can score a point, but his helmet protects him. When Ernie is once again about to score a point for his team, he is tackled by a rival. Ben then tells Ernie he will be substituted off the field because he will not be allowed to score a point because he is black and his teammates may not return home in one piece if he does. Ernie is baffled but agrees to be subbed off for the sake of the team. The Orangemen eventually take the lead but racist insults are hurled at Ernie who is infuriated. Ben orders a timeout, but Ernie insists on playing and remains in the match, remembering Will's words who warned him that Ben is only using him. Ben is infuriated by Ernie's actions and scolds him. Enraged, Ernie confronts Ben and indirectly refers to him as a racist, while Ben is advised against recruiting too many black players onto his team or risk losing his position as coach. On the bus ride home, Ernie apologizes for losing his temper but says he's not sorry for staying in the game or scoring points for his team. Ernie continues to shine for the Orangemen game after game until they become the number one team in the national championship with an unbeaten run. As the team celebrates, Ben informs them that they will either play against a tough team or a weak team for the national championship. Ernie votes for the stronger team and everyone supports him. Their final match will be held in Texas, a state where racism is more prevalent than other parts of the nation. As the team arrives in Texas, Ernie is overwhelmed by the abuse subjected to black people there. He is denied lodging at the hotel booked for the team because he is black and is moved to a different location along with JP and the other black men. The following day, Ernie is injured during a training session and Ben's coaches believe it is a blessing in disguise. The staff had discovered racist death threats sent to the team's hotel room, causing Ben to consider keeping Ernie out of the match, but Ernie insists that he will play and Ben agrees to let him. On the day of the game, before the match begins, Ben tells Ernie to go all the way once he has the ball. Ernie is hard tackled as the game starts and suffers an injury to his right leg and officials warn a concerned Ben against interfering in the game. After a brief timeout, the match begins again and Ernie almost scores a point but is tackled hard to the ground by the Texan defenders. As things escalate, JB almost gets into a fight, however, the Orangemen take the lead. After the whistle, another rival player tackles Ernie and Ben yells that the rival players are spiraling out of control, worried for Ernie. When the game resumes, Ernie gets the ball but is tackled again illegally. Ben yells at the referee to do something but it is too late. The match turns into an all-out brawl as the Orangemen and the Texans engage in a brutal fight. At halftime, Ben asks Ernie to sit out the rest of the game and have his wounded leg attended to. Ben then gives his halftime speech and the match begins again but everyone is surprised to see that Ernie is not in the game. The Orangemen continue to lead their rivals, however, without Ernie, their opponents begin to catch up until they only have a one point lead over them. Worried about the success of his team, Ernie convinces Ben to let him back in the game. 
As the game continues, the referee is impartial to Ernie but insists on staying in the game. Ernie manages to push through everything to win the game and the team are crowned champions. Everyone cheers for Ernie and every newspaper has him on their front page. Ernie and his teammates go out to celebrate at a club but are refused entrance because it is still segregated. Two years later, Ernie is awarded one of the most prestigious honors for athletes and as he thanks his family, friends and Ben, he is congratulated by President JFK. Ernie and Sarah are now in a relationship and she becomes worried one day about his health when he starts bleeding from his nose. As Ernie prepares for the All-American Tournament, he collapses on the field and is rushed to the hospital, where Ernie is heartbroken to learn that his health will prevent him from playing further. After Ernie is diagnosed with leukemia, he addresses the press to say that he will return to the game once he has recovered. Sometime after, Ernie and Ben set out to scout another talented football player, Floyd Little, who Ernie encourages to follow his dreams. Ernie was forced to retire from football at the age of 23 and died of leukemia in 1963. This was the true story of the trailblazing black athlete Ernie Davis. That was all from the video. Subscribe for more content like this and leave a like to help the channel out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Take care.